This session is uh, greeting peas, sweet corn, broccoli, winter squash, and carrots as part of the Northern Organic Vegetable Improvement Collaborative, or NOVIC. My name is Jim Myers. I'm uh, project director for NOVIC and uh, a plant breeder, also a vegetable breeder at Oregon State University. And I thought what we would do today is uh, first give an overview of the project. Um, I just would point out on this uh, title slide, we have the, the people that are involved in the breeding project on NOVIC. NOVIC, by the way, is a, it's an OREI, USDA OREI funded program, and I'll have more to say about that later, but just um, um, very, I think it's a very useful program that has um, been funded to work on uh, improving vegetable varieties for organic So NOVIC comes out of this um, question, is there a need to breed within organic systems? to develop varieties that are optimally adapted for organic systems. And the, the logic here is that organic produ production systems or environments are different from conventional production environments. And you need, for optimal performance, you need varieties that are adapted to those particular types of systems. And if, since um, World War II anyway, varieties bred in conventional systems have um, our varieties have been bred for conventional production and would be less than optimally adapted to organic systems. There's a, I'll, I'll present just a couple of cases here where uh, people have found uh, evidence of this uh, research. There's not a lot of research in this area comparing organic and conventional variety performance, but just to couple of examples here. One in wheat, this is some of uh, Kevin Murphy and uh, Stephen Jones' work, and then in maize, this is uh, work of uh, Berger in, in Germany okay, with KWS, commercial corn breeding uh, firm there. But anyway, um, here in this particular uh, chart, there's um, the top of the, this group, pick the, the top five um, varieties in each environment, the top five conventional, the top five organic, and then look at the performance in the opposite environment. You can see that there's quite a bit of change, a crossover in ranks here, which would indicate um, that you know, one, what's best in one system doesn't necessarily work best in the other. And you can, uh, you can look at correlations, um, if their correlations are high, then one environment is pretty good predictor of another environment. But if they're low, then they're, they're not. What um, Murphy et al. found was that for yield, this crossover interaction is, is high and the correlation between environments is low. Um, and the rationale would be that you would need to breed in an organic environment for best performance. They did not find that for test rate, though. Different traits. Something similar in maize. Um, here they looked at um, grain yield and dry matter content and some other traits. The um, correlations are low to moderate for, between environments for grain yield. They're high for dry matter content. Again, the, uh, with these um, low to moderate correlations, you need to breed in that environment if you're going to make progress in the environment, which would justify an organic program for grain yield, but not necessarily for dry matter content. And the same was true for things Dry matter content, maturity, disease resistance all showed a similar pattern. So um, this um, is some, you know, it's kind of a mixed bag, but yield is often your most important trait, so that's the, uh, what you would, you, would need, you would need to do. The um, other thing about this is that yield is a, has m many more genes involved in it whereas something like grand minor content, probably fewer, but the heritability is low, and that probably enters into this need for certain traits to, to be bred in the organic system if you're going to have optimal adaptation for that. Now, what are the key differences in that environment? And these, this is my list here of what um, 
all the of a number of factors that go to, into an organic system and what would be most important. There, uh, in particular, it's the soil, the soil fertility, and the microbial community. These are all going to be very important in uh, influencing what happens in, in the organic system, how that plant grows and develops. Pests and weeds can also be uh, different between organic and conventional. This is going to have an effect on the cultivar that you choose. Some of the traits that may be um, different between the two systems. Um, the ability to perform well in a high population density versus lower population densities for conventional versus organic. Uh, differences in harvest index, differences in architecture. Um, weed competitiveness can is something that you know, we rely on herbicides and conventional, whereas competitiveness can be an important trait in an organic system. Pest and disease complexes may be very different, and you may have to rely on uh, more on genetic resistance in organic system. And root traits are also something that can be quite important in organic. Um, adaptation to how nutrients are taken up um, being responsive to mycorrhiza, things like that. Um, the ability to, um, in legumes, utilize my, uh, the rhizobium uh, symbiosis is important. And then we consider traits in organic that we may not consider in the conventional system, like um, social justice traits that, that um, include working conditions. And there, uh, there also is uh, generally more uh, diversity in you know, it's as Bill uh, Tracy said this morning, it's um, a system, a complex system you're working in, and you want um, varieties that can continually evolve in that system. So the uh, NLP regulations uh, are another aspect of why uh, we're doing OVIC. It's this requirement for certified organic seed in particular is important. And this uh, requirement is that a producer use organically grown seed except when non organic organically seed is. Uh, are, the producer must use organic seed except if it's not available, then you can use untreated uh, conventional seed. And this is, has been slow for this to, for varieties to come about, which are. Um, that can be, uh, that are produced organically. So, um, it, uh, Novik is an attempt to, to help uh, speed up the process. So, th some of the things that can be done, variety trials to identify those that are adapted, develop cultural methods, and to breed for adaptation. And Novik has these two, the first and the third aspect. There have been several programs that have looked at variety trialing over the years that I've been involved in, Oregon Seed, Organic Seed Partnership, uh, various broccoli trials, and Novik has a variety trialing component, which I'll talk about a little bit. Novik itself is a, a four-year program. We're entering into our third year of uh, four institutions with um, Oregon State University, Organic Seed Alliance, University of Wisconsin, Cornell, and USDA program. Training graduate students with this. Uh, three of these graduate students are actually being trained in plant breeding. And generally, the overall theme is that uh, we're, we're trying to adapt to uh, season extension. Farmers are integrated into uh, variety trialing and the plant breeding process. It's also in the long term funding category. The plant breeders are listed here, the crops are here. Uh, uh, the, and uh, the various traits that are important, and uh, the various tolerances are for seed extension, tolerances are for seed extension, we have to varieties, we have to varieties, old tolerance, and extensions, old corn related storage, new corn related storage. There's the, the, the trialing part of this, is there a trialing part of this as well? Because we are um, we're using these trials not only to try out commercial material, but also, um, the, uh, the, the breeding lines as they're developed. Um, and we're able to get data over uh, 
uh, four regions and multiple sites. What we're using is a mother-daughter experimental design. It, the mother trial is usually done on a research, a university research farm. It's replicated. Daughter farms are farms in that region. Farms in that region, farms, and we have just one rep at each one of these sites. So the trial design facilitates data collection, and uh, this this project is providing training and education for future plant readers, and it's, we try to keep it as a flexible system for for plant reading. There's a website now up on the uh, uh, organic, theorganic.info slash novic, and um, the, that's uh, that. Well, that's where I'll leave it right right now. We'll go into our individual crops. 